Hi everyone. In this video, we're taking a look at the Dapper building block for state management. The state management building block enables stateful services. So you can have your service retrieve some data from a state store or save some data from a state store. And since we're using Dapper, your service is not interacting directly with the state store. Your service is interacting with the Dapper API, the state store API to save retrieve or delete some data and the Dapper runtime is responsible for managing the data with the underlying state store. Note that I mentioned here that I specify a key value store because the Dapper state management API deals with key value pairs. It is not used for relational data or document data. There are a lot of underlying state stores that Dapper can use via components. For instance, you can use AWS DynamoDB, you can use Azure Cosmos DB, GCP Firebase, Redis, or MySQL, to name a few. But how does Dapper know which state store to use? That is configured in a YAML file that looks like this. The only thing that your application refers to is the component name, which is listed as my KV store here. The rest of the component file contains the specification type. So in this case, we're dealing with a state component, and this one is specific to Redis. And what follows is a collection of metadata specific to connect to Redis. So this bottom part will vary depending on the actual implementation. Now let's have a look at the API. So when you want to save some key value pairs from your service, you do a post to this state endpoint and the endpoint ends with the name of the state component. So in the component file I've shown earlier, that ID was my KV store. So we're doing a post to state slash my KV store. And we are giving it a payload of an array of key value pairs. I'm showing only one key value pair here, but you need to specify it as an array. This is useful because with one request, you can insert many key value pairs in one go. Note that the key should be of type string. So even though I've used one, two, three here as the key, I'm specifying it as a string. The value can be anything. It can be a simple type or a complex type. If you want to retrieve a key value pair from a state store, you use the state endpoint again, and now you perform a get, and you include the state component name again, and you end with the key that you want to retrieve. So in our example, we use state slash Mike AV store slash one, two, three to retrieve the value that is stored under key one, two, three. You can also retrieve many key value pairs in one request. So this is called a bulk request. So then you do a post to the state endpoint. You specify the name of the state component again, and you end with slash bulk. So in our example, we do state slash my KV store slash bulk. And then you provide a payload where there is a keys attribute that contains an array of the keys. Finally, if you want to delete a key value pair, you do a delete to the state endpoint Again, you mention the name of the state component and end with the key that you want to delete. So in our example, we do state slash my KV store slash one, two, three. So this was a quick overview of the state management building block of Dapper. If you want to know more, I definitely recommend you to have a look at the Dapper documentation. That's quite extensive. If you want to get hands on, definitely have a look at the quick start. There are different examples of the various language SDKs as well as the HTTP API. Finally, if you have more questions or suggestions, please join the Dapper Discord. There's a dedicated channel for state management there as well. Until next time.